Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever and wherever you are. And welcome back to the Beat of Plan playing Shadowrun. So this time, well, we're back here with Gobbit and her octopus. I've talked a little bit already with her about, uh, well, her old memories. Or actually, I didn't talk about the old memories itself as well as tapping into them. After all, she did uh, uh, let someone operate amateur brain surgery on her. Get her memories and store it in a data disk. That's corporate level stuff, as she calls it. It's not something you do every day. There must have been a reason why she wanted to store them away, so she was kind of afraid to tap into them. But then again, why not wipe them then, in that case, I said. You stored them, and you got us to get the key. And she is said, yeah, alright. So that's what we're doing. Alright, Deathclaw. Wish me luck. The key didn't depress us with an audible click. Isabel's eyes flutter and her cheeks flush with blood. I oh no. No 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 no. She starts shaking her head from side to side, mm, wringing her hands. A progress bar on the octopus auxiliary monitor slowly climbs. Oh fuck. Mmm. Unplugging someone who is connected with their brain into a computer thing? Not a smart thing, I think. Uh, you got this, is. Don't back down now. Thanks for the tip, and I'm not backing down. I'm almost done. The progress bar climbs to 100. Isabel snatches the cable back out of her data jack and covers her eyes with her hands. She's shivering. I, uh... She clutches her temple in the palms of her hands. Now I remember why I didn't want to do it anymore. Are you alright? No. I'm not alright. I'm the opposite of alright. She clutches at her skull like she's afraid it's going to crack open. There's a lot of bad stuff in here. Things that happened to friends of mine, to relatives, things that I watched happen. No. It's okay, Isabel. Breathe. Adjust memories. They can't hurt you. Yes, they can. Her voice is ragged. Roll. These memories are crystal clear. It's like all of these shit happened yesterday. I can remember watching friends die and I can see their screaming faces just as clearly as I did the day that it happened. It's like watching a Twitch show. But it's my life. And it's real. Isabel, focus. Is there anything in there that can help us? She screws her eyes shut in concentration. Beads of sweat hang heavy on her brow. I... I think so, yes. I'll take time for me to sift through all of this. She opens her eyes again and looks up at you. I'll hold on to these memories for as long as I can. Hopefully long enough to reveal something useful. No promise would be on that, though. I'm not asking for promises. Just do your best. She gives you a weak half smile. I always do. One thing that does jump out at me. Rumba's achieved some software up here. Oh, archived some software up here. She taps her temple with her fingernail. It's sitting on top of the memories, all wrapped up like a present. Don't know why he did it, but it looks like a combat package. Ooh! Team member upgrade. Combat package, you say? She nods weakly. Some sort of basic attack modification. I'll have to study it to be sure, but I think I, I think that I can use it. Oh, mm, I wouldn't say this because she uh, the was worked. This run worked out better than I thought it would. Uh, she's kind of traumatized right now. Don't think this is really kind. There's some good news. Yeah, it's all very exciting. But for now, just give me some space, okay? She turns away, shivering. Like I said, it's gonna take some time for me to make sense of all the stuff. Give you some space then. She waves you away. Good. Go now. By the way, that was actually good. Go. Now. But, as you saw on the other side of, well, the large room that is, is no bells, Gubbet wasn't present. Yes, indeedy. Uh, Gubbet has gone to the ship that was formerly her home and to, well, most likely her former, well, bunkmates, I would say. People that she slept with and who were also red shamans like her. And, uh, well, she told of a nasty, nasty story to me where, 
She worked with this team and got this very obscure object. And, uh, well, what happened next? I'll tell you in a moment, but first, talk to Captain Giomo. Again, by the way. He almost stands at the edge of the dock, smoking a hand-rolled cigarette as he stares out over the river. As you approach, he lifts a hand in greeting. Who there? Come to admire the river with Jomo. Have a bottle of Bayou Wu. Oui, we... Oh, Bayou Weekend Show. <laughs> I thought this was part of the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was dumb. Um, not right now, Jomo. Uh, no, actually, sure, why not? I can use a drink. Ah, best choice. The orc pirate grins from ear to ear and produces a bottle half full of clear liquid. There's no label and the cork appears to be hand carved. It is the best my meager money can buy. Not many ships worth raiding lately. Goddamn weather. Uh, take a large swig. A small drink may have been a better idea. Your eyes begin to water as the bayou. Bayou? How do I pronounce this? Bayou? Bayou? I don't know. <sighs> Fills your mouth with the flavor of kerosene and old tires. Uh, his last drink was also bad. Just just don't drink anymore what this guy offers. Your throat feels like someone's poured molten glass down in it. And down it. Yeah. That, that sentence just got me already like, <laughs> and I couldn't read anymore. Stifling a cough, you hand the bottle back to Joe. He's still grinning. With this, you're ready to conquer the world. What favor can Joe do for you? You need a body dumped at sea? I can do it fast. No one will see. Maybe you need to hide some cargo on the beach. Maybe a uh, map of an X marked the spot. Captain Joe will burst into a half uh, laughter. Hearty laughter. Slapping his slide in mirth. I am a bit off in reading today. Uh, I need you to take me to the sinking ship. Ah, easy la. I know exactly where the heap of junk is. Lead the way then. Well, and we're going to take Isnobel with us because, well, she noticed that Gobbit wasn't present and demanded to be there. So, once again, the story that was with this run that Gobbit was in, uh, she was 16, I think, as I said before. And, uh, well, this man, well, he said that somebody else wanted the package, but apparently in the end he wanted it and it summed up very bad stories. And he did it in order to mutiny, uh, to, uh, well, arise a mutiny against her friends. The mutiny failed in the end because Gobbit, uh, well, volunteered to get the item back, and which isn't really her style, as you can imagine, as a red shaman. And uh, but she did it. She sneaked in, got it, got back, but uh, she couldn't stay anymore, and she left the place. With reasonable conditions, like it wasn't too much bad blood, despite that she helped getting the item. But well, she did put her life on the line in order to set things back again, but. She hasn't turned back, and as of late, because of all the dreams we are having, all the nightmares that are coming from Kowloon City, she is having thoughts about them. Hang Home Bay, Captain Jomo's converted speedboat chops through the rough water like a cleaver through chicken bones, launching you skyward with every way that it hits. Your destination? The sinking ship, Gobbit's former home. The orc pirate laughs and opens the throttle. Wind and rain lash your face as the floating amalgamation of shipping containers grows larger. You can see that it's stacked at least three containers deep. An inelegant brick of corrugated weathering steel. An assortment of pontoons, buoys and other flotation devices have been lashed to the base of the raft to prevent it from tipping. You don't know what's happening here or why Gobbit felt the need to go face it alone. But one way or another... You're about to find out. And yes, the sinking ship was actually nothing but a raft or build of containers, so... Well, that is still, as they said. Um, yeah, we're still going with this equipment. I didn't buy anything in between. Well, I mean, we didn't get a lot of Nugent the last time. The only Nugent we got was uh, by... <clears throat> well, uh, cleaning out some pockets. Uh, making sure people uh, weren't missing items and all that. When they were jacked into the Matrix, but that wasn't a lot. What I did do is I actually increased my body. And I'm sure that people are going to ask, why, oh, I can't do it in conversation. Why did you do that? Because from 60 to 70 hit points, it's a very small increase. And for 7 points, it's a lot. Well, if I get Cyberware Affinity 7, the last Cyberware Affinity upgrade, and I want it, well, then I need to be at Body 7, and then I can get Cyberware 7. And what it does, the last Cyberware Affinity, is that I can have Armor Penetration 2. Yep, more damage. Two per hit. Significant. Um, so, 
The scramble up the side of the sinking ship was treacherous. You hold yourself up over the edge with your heart hammering in your chest, clawing for purchase against the wind and the driving, driving rain. Walking on the surface deck isn't much better. No, I doubt that this is a very stable contraption. The steel that you're standing on is slick, sheeted with water from the rainstorm that hammers down from above. Every time you shift your weight, you can feel your feet begin to slide. There are no safety rails in sight. A slip, a rogue wave. It wouldn't take much to send you screaming over the edge, off the raft, and into the dark water below. This thing is a wreck. Is Nobel gingerly prods at the rusted section of the container that you're standing on with, with her boot. It depresses easily with entirely too much give. I can't believe that Gavard ever chose to live here. Mm, what did you expect? You've seen your cabin on the Kraken. As I told you, it's now the Kraken our home. And that's fair. This is still worse though. She prods her, mm, the patch of rust again. The steel flakes on her foot. At least her cabin isn't falling apart. Truth is, what we're seeing here doesn't even fit. The lady in charge of this thing, Melinda, or whatever her name was, was supposed to be some sort of control freak. And Gabbard always talked her pal Cadmus up as a top quality repair guy. She prods mm, the patch of rust again, frowning, the steel flakes under her foot. This thing looks like it's getting... This thing look like it's in good repair to you? I've... Take it that it was a rhetorical qu- A sudden gust of wind buffets you. Buffets you, by the way, is it? No, not, I pronounced that wrong. Sending you sliding, Isabel drops to her crowds, clinging to the metal with gloved hands to keep herself from slipping. She looks up, locks her dark eyes up on you. We should get moving. It's dangerous up here, and my gear is getting soaked, which isn't very good for a decker. Agreed. Let's find Gubbet and make sure that she's alright. She not. You take the lead, I'll follow. Well, after our last mission, that's damn right. Heck, took me enough to get you actually to say the things I said. Devoret, don't let them bite you. Another swarm, kill it. Hmm, these are probably on my side. But Devoret, well, that is a a, 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 a totem that I chose for Gabbat to take with her if she wanted. At least this quest is starting off nice and ferociously. Um, wow, I can move a lot. I am in deep doo doo here. But uh, yeah, there's an upgrade that uh, Gavit has that can summon the um, these rats as totems. Ow! That time to miss, but literally that was a crit. All right. Free AP then- oh, I was already wondering, like, you are not stunned? I am amazed. Um, wait a second. I think it's time for Fireball! That was an abysmal low amount of damage. Ow. That hurts. I not be pleased. You're running already! You! Oh great, now I am the center of the attention of these things. Um, you hold the first wound. And slice across the board. That's at least a little bit more and... Time to get a little bit of cover. Because I believe, if I'm correct, that cover also aids against melee attacks, but I may be wrong with that. There we go. And by the way, now that you see armor damaged one, yeah, that is the last upgrade that I took for Isno Bell. I made her explosive and damaged somebody's armor. I thought, uh, well, the other one she could choose was to have, if she was plugged into the Matrix, have decreased damage coming into her body, but if she's in the Matrix, I will defend her. I'd rather have this opportunity because we have used that device quite a few times. Well, if I can stun this little bastard... <clears throat> I should not have jinxed myself ahead of time, uh, should I? Let's do this then. There we go. We're gonna heal off it and it is going to take pain. 
What I wanted to do is, well, stun it, and then I would be well, sure that I wouldn't take any more damage. How many hit points does it have? Three. But it's hammered for minus five HP per round. It should die. We just need to kill this rat. I am very unlucky. We had that before with the vampire. I was doing four shots at about 60%. None hit. Now we have a 60%, but all right. We've gotten through. And I guess come join us by the fire and get warm. That, uh, well, the next episode, we're going to have a little chat or... Well, you know what? Let's put it just in this episode. Uh, hopefully it's not too, too long. The woman by the fire looks like she hasn't um, seen a bar of soap in weeks. Her companion doesn't look much better. Their faces are streaked with soot and grime. The, the rain seems impotent, impotent to wash away. Sometimes I should just take one half of a second better and I can pronounce it properly. You can even see that her face is full of grime. Unfortunately, she's a little bit in the corner. There we go. Glad to see that you made it through that in one piece. Wait a second. I thought... I can't even determine who's the woman. Oh, well, probably this is the woman, considering this small little uh, line here. But yowza. This jawline doesn't really tell me woman to me, but alright. The woman smiles at you, revealing a set of crooked teeth. Please, come stand by the fire and get warm. Yeah, sure. Thank you for your hospitality. Or a smile widens. Of course. We don't get strangers here often, and it's far too miserable out to turn away a guest. Wanna tell me what's up with the killer rats? The devil rats, you mean. They are becoming something of a crisis for us. We don't know why they started attacking, and we seem and we can't seem to wipe them out. Truth to be told, we could really use your help. Hmm. We'll help mm, help you with your rat problem, but you need to help us first. He turns to his companion. Refresh my memory. Didn't we just mm, help peel a swarm of devil rats off them a few seconds ago? Didn't I do most of the work and kill all of them? Yes. Actually, with the exception of one last shot here, we did all the work. It's no bell heels to face the man scowling. We didn't ask you to do that. We could have handled the rats on our own. We're looking for a friend. She sighs. All right, describe this friend of yours to me. She's young, about my age, orcish, with a shaved scalp and dreadlocks. Have you seen her? I'm afraid not. I wish that we had, but we don't get to see many strangers here. So how about it? Will you help us with our rat infestation or not? Well, if Ian Gubbett is here and... Then I think that we're going to have to deal with it nonetheless and... Well, let's be honest. <laughs> Something tells me that we need to follow the rats to find rat shamans. Yeah, we'll help. She breathes a sigh of relief. The rats have been a huge problem for us. Between the damage that they inflict and the disease they carry, they've made it impossible for us to keep up our regular maintenance duties on the raft. Ah, well that explains a few things, but that was more rust than heaped up in a few days. If you follow us, we'll lead you down below decks. With your help, we'll get this ship cleaned out again. Um, lead away the then, and we'll follow. Just over here, follow me. The hatch down below is just over this way. We'll show you down. Alright, but well that is for the next episode. I uh, say so yeah, I thank you for watching, and remember, great peril yields great beauty.